Nyala Kadich Wajak Nuna Wot Kain Kadak Nija Bujak. We acknowledge the Wajak Nunga people, traditional custodians of the land upon which we perform. We recognize their continuing connection to land, waters, and culture. We acknowledge the wisdom of the Aboriginal elders and pay our respects to those elders past, present, and emerging, and extend our respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today.
Hello, my name's Alan Meyer and I'm from the class of 1976. So that's right, that makes me one of the originals in the Churchlands music program. And I know there's more than a few of us here tonight to celebrate the 50th anniversary. So here's a big shout out to the alumni of 1976. We're still here to tell the tale. So I've been lucky enough to be principal clarinet in the WA Symphony Orchestra for 32 years now. And that definitely would not have happened if it hadn't been for the music program at Churchlands. So I'm very thankful for that program setting me on my journey um, uh, through music. And thankful to a couple of people in particular, uh, Richard Flanagan, our music teacher, who only joined us during year 11 and managed to see us through our ATAR music program. Also to our clarinet teacher, Ted Lewis, although of course we never would have been bold enough to call him Ted, it was always Mr. Lewis. And Mr. Lewis scared the bejeebas out of us for at least the first couple of years uh, until we found out that underneath that gruff exterior, he was actually quite a softy. But he saw six of us through the class all the way through high school into and beyond year 12. So one of the big highlights for me was the tour we did in year 12. It was to London, Vienna and Montreux and it was a combination of students from Churchlands, Perth Modern, John Forrest and other government schools. It was the first time any such tour had taken place from Perth uh, in the music schools. It was beyond our expectations and it was a fantastic time, a fantastic success. So um, thank you to the Churchlands Music Programme. Uh, it's just a brilliant programme and there's so many brilliant alumni out there now. And um, Congratulations and let's celebrate tonight. Thank you, Alan. I certainly couldn't put it better than that. I'd like to start by thanking Alia Hunter, our very own Kimberley girl, for her beautiful acknowledgement of country and making welcome the Honourable Sue Ellery, Minister for Education and Training, the Honourable Christine Tomkin, MLA, Member for Churchlands, the Honourable Stuart Aubrey, MLA, Member for Scarborough, Lisa Rogers, Director General, Department of Education, Joe Harris, Director of Education, North Metropolitan Educational Regional Office, Mark Terry, Principal Consultant, Gifted and Talented Unit, Catherine Sturley, Chair of the Churchlands School Board, Gabri Gabriella Jarrett, Churchlands PNC President, Tracy Grolton, Churchlands Foundation and MPC convener. Special guests, former and current Churchlands school staff, music families, friends and alumni. This is your night. A special um, welcome also to somebody who isn't here who will see this when he gets to watch the video and that is to Mr Paul Seeley who would love to have been here but is unable to. So Paul, when you do see this, Hope you're well and uh, would love to have had you here. Tonight we celebrate 50 years of specialist music education at Church and Senior High School and acknowledge the community that supports it. 1972 saw the first intake of students arrive for the special music program at Churchlands. They were a class of year eights selected from around the state. They met for the first time in 1972 and began music classes and instrumental lessons. Each year after, more students arrived. Band and choir rehearsals began, and a combined orchestra was formed with Perth Modern School rehearsing on Saturday mornings. Music camps, music tours, and a school musical happened. And over its first five years, the Churchland Special Music Program grew into its current shape under the care of Richard Flanagan, the first senior master of music, 1974 to 1978. The pioneer year eight students from 1972 graduated in 1976. Some may even be here tonight. We have hunted through the archives and found an ancient roll book and we found an ancient head of department. Mr Flanagan, would you like to please come out and see if anybody from the class of 1976 is here?
Well, uh, <laughs> this is very a very special occasion for me tonight, having um, started this wonderful school in um, 1974 is when I came to the school. And amongst those that I first met were the year 10 students who um, kind of glowered at me and said, how long are you staying? And uh, they'd had three teachers in two years and they had learnt some instruments. Some of them were string players, were still playing their cellos, imaginary cellos on a broomstick and a, and a piece of dowel because they didn't have enough instruments and therefore they, they could only use the ones at school. So they weren't pretty, very happy, these people. And, uh, but very quickly we got to know and trust each other and I have to say they're a wonderful group of people who saw the first uh, graduation in 1976 with TAE scores that were clustered above all other schools, including modern school, in the state, which for them was a massive achievement. So in many ways, tonight's celebration is very special for both the class of 76 and this ancient head of department that I think Mr Robinson referred to me. You know, the first five intakes were pioneers in the creation of Church Dance Music School. At the time when instrumental music and serious studies of music in school was in its infancy. We've come a long way since then. I gratefully acknowledge the commitment of successive heads of department, music staff, generations of students, supported by school administrators, parents and the wider community, to the development of a music school that enjoys national and international recognition as a leader in music education for specially selected, gifted and talented students in Western Australia. Congratulations to all who have been responsible for bringing together this wonderful 50th anniversary celebration concert. And to you, Mr. Robinson, my humble thanks for inviting me to participate in this historical event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Our concert opened with Wind Orchestra One under the baton of Karen Walker performing a symphonic rhapsody of five Armenian folk songs. Armenian Dances has been performed many times by Churchland's bands over the years and would be familiar to many of our alumni. Shortly, we will hear Mark Puddy's Here You Lie, written to commemorate, commemorate the centenary of the Anzac landings. The text is inspired by words attributed to the first president of Turkey, Kamal Ataturk and inscribed on the Anzac Memorial at Gallipoli. The School of Music has always supported our community by performing at charity events or providing buglers, singers or bands for commemorative services. In recognition of this, the RSL of WA assisted our marching bands by sharing the cost of the jackets they now wear. And consequently, the RSL logo features on the jacket pocket. We include Here You Lie to recognise both that connection and the sacrifices by those who serve our country. That will be directed tonight by Claire Chesney, but first we have You Raise Me Up. Directed by Nicole Turner and featuring Kose Gilks, class of 2017, currently working with opera companies in Perth, Cameron Taylor, class of 2019, who is currently in his second year of a Bachelor of Arts in Music Theatre, and Alan Meyer, class of 76, in his debut performance on the Tin Whistle. We thank and celebrate our music parents. Music parent support takes many forms. Cooking sausages, selling raffle tickets, moving chairs on stage, 
or gently coaxing a reluctant chorister out of bed for an early morning choir rehearsal. None of the musicians you see here on stage would be here without the support of a music parent. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Mum. And uh, I wish I'd be more grateful at the time. So if you have a music parent, please give them a round of applause. And so, music parents, in the words of the 1972 Barry Manilow hit, this one's for you.
So the final piece, the Australian March in the style of Percy Granger, please enjoy the Little Ripper March under the baton of adjudicator, composer and conductor, Matt Close. My name is Jo Armstrong. I'm a clinical pharmacist at St Charles Gardner Hospital and a proud alumni of the Churchland Senior High School Music Program where I graduated in 2011. The biggest highlight for me of the program would be music tour to North America and Canada in 2009, as well as every class rehearsal and concert. It was the people, the relationships and the experiences that made the program truly special. The Churchland's music program taught us so much more than music and it has had a profound impact on my life and the person that I am today. I am unbelievably grateful to have been a part of it. Thank you.
Hi everyone, it's Sasha Harrison here, but you'd remember me as Alex Ford, the tuba player from the graduating class of 2004. Going to Churchlands and being in the music program was one of the most incredible experiences and I am so grateful to have been part of it. I enjoyed every part of the music program, the regular concerts, competitions, exams, and of course the tour. In 2003, we went on tour to the UK and it was mind-blowing. Looking back on it though, the highlight for me was actually the tour farewell concert at the Perth Concert Hall. I still have the recording on CD. After high school, I moved to Launceston to study engineering at the Australian Maritime College. At uni, I continued to play the tuba in the university band as well as a local brass band. I stopped playing the tuba when I had my first child. For some reason, practicing the tuba with a baby in the house just didn't work out. I continue to enjoy music these days by singing in the church choir and for the last five years I've sung with a community women's choir. These days I live on the Gold Coast with my husband and three kids. I work part-time as a naval architect. That's the title for the engineers who design ships. Right now we're working on ferries, stern landing vessels and transshipment vessels. I'm very happy to say that my children are learning music. They all do piano lessons and my eldest has started learning the baritone and is in the school band. I'm really thrilled with his instrument choice. I wish I could join everyone for the anniversary celebrations, but I'm there with you in spirit. Bye! Concerto for Two Violins was first published in 1711 and dedicated to a patron of the orphanage in Venice where Vivaldi toiled at the thankless task of teaching music to children. Tonight we feature violinists Semra Lee Smith, class of 1991, and Lisa Smith, class of 2019. That will be followed by the Holberg Suite, subtitled Suite in Olden Style, written in 1884 in the style of 18th century dancers to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the birth of writer Ludwig Holberg. And they are directed by Anne Hanrahan. Please make them welcome. Thank you.
Thank you, Chamber Orchestra. Now, it occurs to me there was one person that I neglected to acknowledge at the start, and that is Mr Neil Hunt, Principal of Church and Senior High School, without whom we would not be here tonight, so thank you, Mr Hunt. Last year, our wind, brass and percussion playing alumni came together for a one-off rehearsal and recording session for tonight's concert. Despite a lot of interest, we had no idea who would turn up. But when the day arrived, a well-balanced band appeared on stage. Thank you to Paul de Cinque and Bruce Herriman for your willingness to direct an ensemble that could potentially have been any random assortment of instruments. I really hope we can do it again. It was a lot of fun. Please enjoy the Alumni Wind Orchestra as they perform Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, with vocalist Ruby de San Miguel, class of 2012, and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, class of 1194. Thank you. I'm Bruce Herriman. I'm a graduate of uh, class of 1977. And, uh, uh, so I went through that, uh, through, through Churchlands in its, when it was in its second year of a music program uh, and a very exciting time as it was back then. Certainly a great deal of pleasure to be able to conduct this particular group. Uh, my role at the moment is I'm principal with the Instrumental Music School Services. So I oversee the, uh, the Instrumental Music Program in public schools right throughout the state. Uh, and a significant part of that of course is this program at Churchlands and our gifted and talented programs. Uh, so it's the connection that I've had with this school has uh, is really been almost continuous since I started in 1972. So to have the opportunity to conduct was, uh, was very uh, special and I, I thank the music department for inviting me to do it. Uh, a number of the uh, players in the group I've had a long connection with, it, with either uh, teachers or players in groups that I've been involved in. And uh, so the, the chance to do this is, uh, has been great. I guess the obvious thing of the, of the one common goal, when students come here they have this, uh, music is the focus. Uh, and it certainly was for us and I'm sure it is for the students now. Uh, back when I started there was also perhaps the common connection that uh, uh, in almost all subject areas we went through as a group. So there was a really strong bond with all the music students. But because you're involved in things before school, after school, and, and particularly for, for the band students on Saturday mornings, uh, you're really involved in, with the same group of students for five and a half days a week. Uh, and so that was that, it's that connection. And then it's become a lifelong connection with people that I, uh, I know and uh, are very good friends right, uh, right to now, you know, 50, 50, 49 years later for me anyway. Yeah. Glenn did uh, make the connection that there would be um, a piece that would uh, a feature a singer, and Ruby's uh, a singer that graduated in 2012, so um, quite a young one in, in comparison. And uh, so the opportunity for her to, to have a solo role, to give something a little bit different for, for us to uh, record for this. Uh, and I was very happy to, um, to conduct uh, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, uh, a, a great piece, and it works so well with the band, and uh, I was happy to do that. And then Paul, Paul DeCinque's piece of music, uh, Robin Hood, Pins of Thieves, is one that's, uh, obviously he had a connection with uh, Glenn, and a connection to that piece is a piece that was played when he did his final concert here at Churchlands back in the 90s. Uh, so uh, that was great for him to get up there and conduct it and uh, uh, it, it's been a, a joy to rehearse and conduct um, the, both, both these pieces and um, it's, it's been fun, it's been great to see people as well. I think that the Department of Education uh, in, just in establishing the Gifted and Talented Music Schools made a great, a great decision back then to do it and, and I guess I'm biased because in my career, that, that's been my career, but without the opportunity to do it, uh, uh, I certainly wouldn't be doing the, th the things that I do. Uh, and uh, it, it's just a, just a really special thing, not just for those people who've necessarily gone into music, but those who've added to the cultural experience of people here in WA. So it's my hats off to the Department of Education for giving young children in WA this opportunity for the last uh, 50 years here at Churchlands and earlier than that at, at when the, it was established at Perth Modern School back in 68. It's been what great.
Hi, David McGregor here. Uh, I graduated the Church Lands Music Program in 1989, playing the trumpet. And I look back on that time with such great fondness. It really is hard to believe you could have so much fun at high school. Uh, I would not do it any other way if I could do it all again. Uh, naturally, at that time, I, I enjoyed it so much that I went on to study music at university uh, and also enjoyed a time as a professional trumpet player and musician uh, and teacher um, through the 90s. However, um, in my late 20s, I really wanted to pursue a different dream, um, something that I had always wanted to do as a kid, and that was to become a fighter pilot. And so I joined the military and have since enjoyed a successful time uh, as a fighter pilot and, and flying many other aircraft all around the world uh, in the Air Force. But I think, um, crucially, that the music program and music itself um, formed an integral part of laying a great foundation for my success uh, as a fighter pilot. Uh, I, I would highly recommend uh, doing that, even if you're going to pursue a different career. It really does help you um, uh, in many, many ways that it's, it's hard to put your finger on, um, but just the visualization, uh, the, the, the practice um, that you have to do as a musician, it just translates to many different uh, other careers. And for me, like I said before, was a huge um, uh, part of my success. Um, so if you had a choice, uh, really it's a, it's a simple choice. Uh, continue to do music and enjoy it while you can. And even if it doesn't become part of your career, um, it, it will easily uh, help you in many other careers. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, thank you very much to our alumni. Birdland is the band you see on stage right now. Uh, their repertoire tonight transitions from early jazz to a traditional big band vocal and finally a contemporary jazz chart. Sanctified Blues, bracket family bracket, is a New Orleans swing style and features students Mitchell Gregg on trombone and Charlize Gregg on clarinet alongside their dad and alumni trombonist Jeremy Gregg along with alumni Adrian Kelly on trumpet. Tonight we celebrate family in a literal sense with our current students and alumni performing together. That will be followed by the Swinging Shepherd Blues, featuring vocalist and Whopper student, Whopper jazz student, and alumni Sophie Kerr, with Abby Brook on soprano sax and Amy Scalern on the double bass. The lyrics describe a shepherd leading his flock home to the swingingest, grooviest ditty. A parallel might be drawn, according to Mr. Borgo, with those teachers who have encouraged jazz at Churchlands and produced our outstanding jazz alumni. The final piece tonight was commissioned for tonight's concert and is the work of alumni trombonist and composer Chris Grieve, who teaches composition and trombone at the Royal Conservatoire in Scotland. The work is partly based on a student's progress through the music program before leaving to further their music studies and on to a musical career before returning in some capacity to their Churchlands home. Tonight's performance features Tom Hobwood on guitar, alumni Flavio Connelletti on the keyboard, and one of Chris Greaves' contemporaries, Dr. Jamie Ullers. Following their performance, there is a short 20 minute interval. Please make welcome their director, Andre, Andre Borgo de Cordray.
us over the swinging shepherd plays a tune. His sheep never stray, dancing all day until they see the paling yellow moon. And when he leads his flock and home, would they all rock to the tune of the swinging shepherd's blues? This is something really extra special I didn't even like to do just for you It's the biggest, the biggest circuit that they that we've ever done And if you like it then before we are through then you ought to move along groove and on and join the song that I might have to repeat
Hello, my name is Peter Chan and I'm a trombone player. I graduated from Churchlands in 2002 and I am still playing trombone to this day. I actually started in 1998. I came in from doing actually trumpet from my primary school. I got in an audition late and got offered the trombone as a scholarship, which meant, hey, this is awesome. I get to do a brand new instrument, which I've never even considered. And it was for like five years of, I think it was scholarship free lessons. My parents love that a lot. Finished off doing waste music and managed to get top mark of the state on trombone and really, really enjoyed it. It came from a tradition of my family. My older brother and my older sister were also both Churchlands graduates as well. Brother playing the French horn, older sister playing violin and younger brother also playing French horn. So it kind of came a bit of a tradition for our family to go through the Churchlands music program. Certainly the highlight of my experience there would have to be the music tour. That was just extraordinary. Getting offered the chance to go to Europe, traveling all around the places. I wish I could name them all off the top of my head, but we got to play in Disneyland Paris. We went and visited the location of where Mozart lived, but mostly we got a really, really musical endowment, I suppose, and experience to understand things a lot better. But best of all, it was a whole community behind everyone being a whole together. It didn't matter what grade you were in, everyone was just seen as musicians. And that's actually something that I love about today. It's about the same community of people together and Churchlands really, really had that. Post Churchlands, I've actually moved on to do music still because hey, it's a big part of my life, studying trombone in university. Nowadays, I'm actually teaching music at schools, not at Churchlands, unfortunately, but I'm teaching at lots of private schools, teaching privately, and also freelance playing around the place as well. It's actually fantastic. Um, in this concert today, I'm just looking around and saying, hey, I know you, wait, you went to Churchlands? I know you, seeing all these faces that I've professionally played with and seeing that they also went through Churchlands. So um, I would say that music from Churchlands has just pushed on to be not just part of my life in high school, but part of my life in general, full stop. My biggest advice I want to give you is make music fun. Make it that thing that when your parents tell you to go do homework, you go, okay, and you just go and play trombone or whatever your instrument you're playing and just enjoy yourselves. If you're not enjoying it, that means something's wrong and hey, make it so it's enjoyable. Just love music. I don't really know what you can do about it and love it with other people. Just enjoy music as a whole. Hello, my name is Eliza and I'm from the class of 2012. I was a harp student <laughs> and um, I still play the harp today. And in fact, I work as a freelance harpist and harp and piano teacher. So I've totally become a musician and I think I've got Churchlands to thank for that. The highlight of my time as a Churchland student was without a doubt. <laughs> Um, my music teacher. Um, not only did he obviously teach me a lot about music, um, but he always made me feel that I was capable of becoming a very good musician. He always had a kind thing to say to me after like a performance exam or a concert. Um, and he was just so encouraging, um, like he believed in me. <laughs> so that's a little bit about uh, this teacher who uh, had such a very profound um, impact on my life. And to this day, I honestly believe he's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. He's one of the best human beings that I've ever met. And uh, I'm just really so thankful that I had the, the chance to meet him. Hi, my name is Yi Ching. I graduated from Church and Senior High School as part of the Special Music Program in 2006. I played the French horn. I'm now a physiotherapy coordinator at a stroke service in the Metro Hospital. And it was a great choice to continue music in, throughout my high school uh, subjects because I had to practice lots of self-discipline, time management and uh, did lots of rehearsals on top of all the T subjects in year 11 and year 12. And I also got to go to the music tour in London, Wales, Austria. Those are really, really great memories. So I 
participate in the music program and all the music teachers I've come across to be a person that I am today and uh, to have the confidence to face the real life um, to be the um, successful person I am. I um, really, really from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And that was the drum line, which consists of a line of drums. <laughs> and now, an important moment in the history of our program, where we recognise and celebrate the contribution of one of our own. To perform that duty, who better 
from the Honourable Sue Ellery, MLC, Minister for Education and Training. Please make her welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity of uh, joining you on such a fabulous evening. Can I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're celebrating on tonight, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Can I also acknowledge my parliamentary colleague and your local member of parliament, uh, Christine Tonkin, Lisa Rogers, the Director General of the Department of Education, and of course your principal, uh, Mr Neil Hunt. I'm delighted to join you as we celebrate 50 years of specialist music education at Churchland Senior High School. This year also marks a further celebration as it's the 60th birthday of the school. So happy birthday, Churchland Senior High School. Now the gifted and talented uh, education music program at Churchlands is the state's largest and most successful with graduates in leading and principal positions, as we've already seen tonight, in many high-profile national and international arts organisations. The program's culture has developed over its 50 years with recognised community expectations of the school as a home of excellence. And we've heard some fantastic stories tonight um, about where graduates uh, have gone as well. So whether it's the Churchlands Gate Music students uh, representing the state internationally, performing at festivals around the world, providing music, as we've heard, for Anzac Day Dawn services in Villiers Bretonneau in France, and the Titanic Centenary National Commemorative Service in Ireland, Churchland Senior High School music students are everywhere. The school also has a strong history of supporting community events and so, as we've heard already, play an important part, for example, in Anzac Day um, ceremonies. Now, as well as celebrating the 50th anniversary, I have another special job that I need to do tonight. So when she was revisiting Churchland Senior High School, much loved and admired soprano, Taryn Feebig, lit up the audience with her humour, her anecdotes, and the beauty and richness of her voice. Taryn was a class of 1989 Gate Music student. She was head girl and a Helpman Award-winning principal soprano at Opera Australia. She left her last concert at Churchlands with the audience wanting more, and she said, you can have all of the potential in the world, but if you don't have the right kind of music teachers, you're stuffed. That's a technical term. Now, tragically, Taryn passed away from ovarian cancer in March of last year. To support and recognise the next generation of Churchland's music students, she left a very generous bequest to support students who show promise and a passion for choral music. Taryn's career highlights include performances with Opera Australia, the Australian Chamber Orchestra, the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra, the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, the WA Symphony Orchestra, and the Queensland Symphony Orchestra. As I said, she was a recipient of two Helpman Awards. She sang for Prince Charles and she played his cello in concert. And she performed over 200 performances of My Fair Lady as Eliza Doolittle. Tonight, I have the special honour not only to acknowledge Taryn's achievements, but to announce that Taryn's legacy is being recognised by the naming of the Churchland's Concert Hall as the Taryn Feebig Concert Hall. In In closing, folks, can I extend my thanks to all who've been involved in tonight's concert? The performers, the teachers, the principal Hunt, uh, to the staff and all of the students working behind the scenes. And thank you to the families who've provided much needed support. Now, folks, I've got to catch a plane early tomorrow morning, so I can't stay for the second half. But if it's anything like the first half, you're in for a great rest of the night. Thank you very much. Wow, and thank you, Sue Ellery. 
Tonight also marks the end of an era, and we are very fortunate that Lisa Rogers, Director General, Department of Education, is here tonight to mark this special event with due ceremony. Please welcome the boss teacher, Lisa Rogers. Good evening, and welcome to a very, very special evening. Tonight, we are celebrating many things. Happy birthday, Church and Senior High School School of Music. We're celebrating milestones, we're celebrating the achievements of young musicians in the School of Music, as well as, the, as, well as those that came before them. And indeed, we are celebrating the career of Mr. Bruce Harriman, Principal of the Instrumental Music School Services. Tonight, I would like to focus on Bruce, if I may. Bruce, if you could make your way onto the stage, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Many of you, I hope, attended Opus 2022 last week at this very spot. In the program, I spoke about the power of music as a great unifier of people. It is its own superpower. It can pump you up to go to the gym. It can stir up memories of times past, regardless of your background, your culture, your beliefs, location, history, and so on. It can bring us together, and you only need to look at any festival or performance to see the power of music. Neuroscientist Antonio Damasio once said, we are not thinking machines, we are feeling machines that think. Music is that feeling, it is pure emotion. And tonight that music brings us together to enjoy and celebrate our students, today and in the past, and to offer gratitude to Mr. Harriman. He and his team have led the way in promoting music to children and young people and their families. And he has supported those educators in schools who are encouraging a love of music in their students. But as many of you know, Bruce, after a period of leave, is retiring. So we would like to celebrate his career tonight. Bruce, welcome to your swan song. <laughs> Let's start with your history. Some of this has been spoken about tonight. Many of you may not have known, but Bruce is a graduate of the Churchland Senior High School Gifted and Talented Music uh, Program, the 1973 intake. After school, Bruce attended the WA College of Advanced Education, obtaining his Bachelor of Education. He began teaching in schools from 1982. He joined what is now the Instrumental Music School Services in 1994, and you can see a more detailed bio in your program. And if we fast forward to now, 40 years later, all I can say is your love of music is infectious and your students, alumni, and colleagues are all a testament to your skill, Bruce. There are two big things that happen when somebody retires. The first one is we give thanks. It's incredibly hard to say farewell to somebody who has been a constant presence on the music circuit for many, many, many years. I, the students and families and colleagues, past and present, sincerely thank you for the role that you have played in nurturing a love of music to thousands of kids in WA and made the teaching of music in school an absolute pleasure. For those who you have taught and mentored, we say thank you. You have our deepest respect. I do hope you continue your association with Churchland Senior High School and as we can see from the faces of the students and their families and colleagues here tonight, they have a huge amount of respect for you, Bruce. The second thing you do when somebody retires is we tell stories about them, and that's probably the most fun part. I'd like to share some with you now, but can I start by saying that you are the consummate professional, and it made finding the right type of stories a little bit difficult. So we turn to someone who knows you the best, and that's your youngest son, son Sam. So he's in on this. <laughs> Sam told us many stories, too few to mention here, but I will mention one or two. 
There was a time when you, I can't believe this, there was a time when you fell asleep in the pit once and then woke up and started playing in the wrong spot. <laughs> I would never have thought. Um, and when you played for the WA Orchestra, during one season, the trombones were only in need in the, in the latter stages of Act Three. Apparently, you and your trombone mates rocked in at the second interval, played for 15 minutes and then collected the same paycheck as the violinist that had been toiling away for three hours. Good planning, I reckon. And then I'm told, um, and this is a little bit risque, that at a Perth Modern concert, a comment was made to a lady by the name of Mandy by a patron at the concert about Bruce's nice derriere um, as he was conducting. Mandy, for those who don't know, actually is Bruce's wife. So Bruce, I know you're conducting later in the concert, do I, so I hope you don't feel too scrutinised. <laughs> Let's not forget the camp at Quaranup, where Bruce is put in charge of the brass band sessions, which over the years have been given more and more elaborate titles. Right now, it's Bruce's Big Brass Band Bash and Bonanza in the Boast Shed. I can't say that three times. Is that, did I get that right? That's right, yes. An instrumental music school services teacher once commented on one of his young students, uh, Bruce Herriman. He said this student was quite impressive, to the point where the teacher decided that he should venture off and improve his skills on brass instruments in order to be able to teach such a gifted student. But Bruce, when we talk to people about you, what makes you you, they use words like patient, mentor, easy demeanor, encouraging, professional, genuine, carey, caring, and fiercely loyal. If I could take a moment to read a couple of messages from those who you have made a difference to. The first is on behalf of Peter Younghusband, the brass coordinator of the Instrumental School, um, school Services. Peter says, I feel honored to have worked for such a fabulous bloke, person, and leader for 25 years. Bruce, Thank you for everything you have done for me, for instrumental music school services, music in Perth, and music in WA. From Kevin Fraser, Debbie Principal of the Instrumental Music School Services. Some leaders are like a Mahler symphony, complex, intense, and you're waiting for a resolution. Bruce is more like a Beethoven pastoral. You know it has all the same complexities, and it's built on the same foundation of intricate theory and texture. However, it is comfortable, it is supportive, and it makes you feel that you're part of the music. Bruce, I congratulate you, and I thank you for your supportive and creative leadership. All the people you have worked with over the years have learned so much witnessing you in action. I'm sure most people are wondering what on earth Instrumental Music School Services will be like without you. Bruce, enjoy the next stage of your life. I hope it is filled with good mates, with family, friends, and always good music. Enjoy your final hurrah conducting tonight, and congratulations on an inspirational career. Over 41 years of service to public education, and we want to salute you. Thank you, Bruce. no idea. And now it is my very great pleasure to introduce a member of Churchland's music royalty. This lady formed and conducted the first Churchland Symphony Orchestra and was the target of the legendary buried Volkswagen prank. She is here tonight to induct four music alumni into the ranks of the Churchland's champions. Please welcome Gillian Croston. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. The two th in 2006, the Churchland Alumni Association began a practice of honouring former students who have achieved great things or made significant contributions to the community. We call them Churchland's Champions, 
and from time to time, as worthy candidates are recommended, we add to this distinguished company. The purpose is to express our pride in outstanding graduates and to celebrate their achievements. It's not about showing off or claiming credit. School is just one part of a person's development. We want to show current students that graduates of their own school have achieved excellence in various fields, served in high office, or made a difference in the community. We hope these examples will encourage students to strive to realise their own potential. On this special night, we are acknowledging four new champions, all graduates of the Churchlands Music School. The first champion is from the second cohort of music students, a graduate, a graduate of 1977, Christine Turpin. Chris studied percussion at Churchlands and obviously showed great promise from early on as she was playing gigs with Wazo when she was really supposed to be in class. I don't think the Minister of Education should hear that. She studied music at UWA and the Victorian College of the Arts, gaining a position in the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra in 1981 and becoming the principal timpanist in 1988. In 1992, Chris won an Australia Council Grant to study timpani in the US. In conjunction with her career in MSO, Chris worked with many other orchestras in Australia and overseas. She played on dozens of original film scores, including Crocodile Dundee, Mad Max, The Man from Snowy River, and Babe. After a remarkable 35-year career with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, Chris has now retired. We are very proud of this former student who has contributed so much to professional orchestral music in Australia. Congratulations, Christine. I had the very great privilege and pleasure of teaching the next three pupils in the 1980s and 1990s. We acknowledge the next Churchlands champion with great sadness. Sonia Slaney, an extraordinary musician and graduate of 1982, passed away in 2021. Sonia studied at the Royal Northern College of Music in the UK and forged a career in London as a violinist, arranger and orchestral leader. She was also a passionate champion of strings in pop and rock music. Sonia composed and arranged for performers such as the Cranberries, Boy George and Bjork and performed life live with legends like Philip Glass, Michael Nyman and Seal. Sonia's movie credits include The Avengers and The Hunger Games. Her electric violin playing can be heard on the Bond movies Skyfall and Spectre. The first sounds in the Fellowship of the Rings are Sonia on her self-made monochord. With her husband, percussionist Paul Clarvis, Sonia established the record label Village Life, producing the work of alternative musicians. Sonia was described as pivotal to the music fusion scene, always keen to broaden people's minds. We honour Sonia's achievements and thank members of her family for being here tonight. Her mother Gerda and her sisters Marianne and Ilana and their partners. <clears throat> Tonight's champion from the 90s is Dr. Jamie Earls who is with us tonight, a current music parent and one of many graduates whose children have also come to Churchlands. Jamie Ohlers is one of Australia's leading jazz saxophonists. 
After graduating from Whopper, he won a scholarship to the Berklee College of Music in Boston. In 2003, Jamie won the World Saxophone Competition at the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland. Since then, he has won numerous awards, including Australian Jazz Artist of the Year and on three occasions, Best Contemporary Jazz Album. Jamie has performed throughout the world at major jazz festivals. He has performed and recorded with many great international artists, including Charlie Hayden, Rufus Reed, and Kate Severano. Jamie has released 14 albums as a leader, including a recent recording with Paul Grabowski and one with fellow alumni Tal Cohen. He appears on over 100 recordings as a sideman. He is currently Associate Dean of Music at WAPA. We congratulate you, Jamie, on your successful career and your contribution to jazz development and music education. And from the new millennium, we announce Linda O, oh, graduate of 2001, as the final champion tonight. Now living in New York City, Linda is a bass player and composer. At Churchlands, Linda was known for her versatility and skill on the bassoon, piano and bass. After graduating from Whopper, Linda studied at the Manhattan School of Music. Linda has received many awards, including a 2022 Deutsche Jazz Prize, the 2021 APRA Art Music Award for Best New Jazz Work, and she's been voted Bassist of the Year four times by the Jazz Journalists Association. Linda has composed for various ensembles and film and was recently featured in the Pixar movie Soul playing in the animated band alongside legendary drummer Roy Haynes. She has released five critically acclaimed albums. Linda has performed with great international artists such as Pat Metheny, Kenny Barron, Joe Lovano and James Morrison. She is currently an associate professor at the Berklee College of Music. We congratulate Linda on her brilliant career as a performer, a composer, and an educator. Thank you.
Jabberwocky borrows its lyrics from Lewis Carroll's nonsensical poem, describing the life and death of the Jabberwock. Listen out for Carroll's other extraordinary creatures, including the frumious Bandersnatch, the Jubjub Bird, and of course, the Slithy Toves. That is followed by Pemelway. Pemelway was born around 1756 near what is now known as Homebush Bay in Sydney. He belonged to the Bidjigal clan of the Eora Nation. The crow was his totem. From 1790 to his death in an ambush in 1802, Pemelway led his people in resisting British settlement in Australia. He was said to be invincible against British weapons. Legend states that on one occasion, he was shot seven times and locked in a prison cell to die during the night. The next morning, the troopers unlocked the iron door and Pemelway was gone. But a crow was perched watching from the window. Please make welcome the chamber choir and their first conductor, Morel Hopwood.
Hello everybody, my name is Peter Luff and I'm a horn player from the class of 1982, so 40 years in the making. Congratulations to Churchill Senior High School's music department on their 50th anniversary. That's a fantastic achievement. Um, I am now an associate professor in brass and horn teaching at the Queensland Conservatorium and I was the associate principal horn of the Queensland Symphony Orchestra for many, many years. And I can honestly say none of this would have been possible without the amazing guidance and tuition I received uh, whilst I was a student at Churchlands. Um, it was a great time, everything from our music camps at Camp Quarren up to our Anzac Day performances every year in the choir, concert band rehearsals on the weekend, orchestra rehearsals that we shared with Perth Mod. Um, just a wonderful time, amazing teachers, amazing support. Um, again, my heartfelt congratulations and uh, have a great night and all the best to everybody. As we change the stage, you'll see that alumni are joining out of the current chorale members on stage. Some of these alumni only joined the choir today. <laughs> During Christmas 2007, Orli Elu composed Northern Lights in an attic in Oslo, Norway, looking out over a wintry lake under the stars and thinking about how this terrible beauty is so profoundly reflected in the Northern Lights. He described it as one of the most beautiful natural phenomena he had witnessed with a powerful electric quality that must have been both mesmerizing and terrifying to the people in the past. Even though the music is quite serene on the surface, both the music and the words are about a terrible and powerful beauty. That is followed by Moondyne Joe. It was commissioned by Churchlands for the 2015 music tour with the text based on a poem by Brian Lynch, while the music is by noted Melbourne-based composer Mark Puddy. Joseph Bolitho Jones, better known as Moondyne Joe, was Western Australia's best known bush stranger, something of a petty criminal and a robber. He was regularly jailed for his offences. He is best remembered for his multiple escapes from jail, 
including a maximum security cell at Fremantle Prison, where he escaped in his underwear and boots. Please make welcome the first conductor, Ms. Ursula Gregg.
I graduated from the music school in 1976 and it was a terrific year. We were the first year to start I think in 1972 and uh, we had some incredible experiences and incredible memories uh, and some lifelong friendships. I played clarinet and bass clarinet. My main career now is uh, real estate and uh, here we are, we're in my office, Bell Property in Caulfield in Victoria in Melbourne and um, it's been uh, a wonderful journey thus far. Um, when I graduated from high school, I went on to Teachers College and uh, majored in maths and sorry, music and mathematics. And from there, um, I did some part-time teaching as well, but played in rock and roll bands as well and picked up the tenor saxophone. From there, I went on to America and I studied at Berklee College of Music and graduated from there um, in music production and engineering and went on from there to work at EMI Records in New York City uh, for a number of years, which was a terrific opportunity and I did some artist management travelling around the United States. After a while I got a bit homesick, a bit tired of the music industry, the late nights, wanted something a bit more regular, came back to Australia, thought, you know what, I'll try real estate. And that was some 30 years ago and uh, I've loved it uh, ever since. The music school, what a fantastic school, what a fantastic opportunity. And even though I'm not in music full time, I will say that you know it's been uh, an amazing part of my life and is certainly, I guess, I, I would say it's probably more a part of my life now than it's ever been. I enjoy my music uh, as much, if not more so, than back in the day. What else can I tell you? It's been great and it's great to be here, great to be a part of the 50th anniversary celebrations and I'm looking forward to catching up with friends uh, along the way. Thanks a lot and let's have a great night. Thank you, Marshall. And uh, Marshall is here tonight, in fact. Uh, when the idea of recording an alumni big band was floated, Andre was instantly excited with the prospect of bringing together some of the jazz heavyweights who had graduated from Churchlands. While the jazz community is naturally com collaborative, nevertheless, Andre was thrilled when everyone he approached replied with a yes. The re recording process was long and time consuming, but the result highlights the caliber of our graduates. These musicians have recorded themselves in studios, lounge rooms and offices, from Perth to New York to Miami. Sound engineer and former music parent Lee Buddle has meticulously blended the individual recordings and Rick Grigsby has assembled the videos into a performance you will see tonight. Please enjoy Rhapsody in Blue.
Our symphony students have been joined by alumni from the very first graduating class of 1976 through to this year's graduating class of 2022. Some have flown from interstate to be a part of this. First piece, To the Greatest Heights, was commissioned to celebrate this occasion and composed by Jonathan Yang. Jonathan, who is here tonight, is an Australian composer of film, orchestral chamber and solo instrumental music. To the Greatest Heights is performed by the Symphony Orchestra who are joined by the Year 11 and 12 Senior Choir, the Year 10 Choir and Churchland's alu um, alumni. It features solo vocalists Kate Humphreys, Patrick Gleeson and Lionel Pearson. This cinematic piece links to the school's motto, Aim High, loosely tracing an individual's journey through life. It, it embodies the energy and enthusiasm as we strive to achieve our hopes, dreams and desires while facing setbacks of disappointment and grief. We dust ourselves off and with effort and determination climb to even greater heights. Followed by Festive Overture. It's a celebratory piece written in 1954 for the 37th anniversary of the October Revolution and composed in just three days. It begins and ends with a heroic brass fanfare. The Festive Overture was used as the theme of the 1980 Moscow Olympics in, um, and, and it is conducted tonight by Bruce Herriman. Bruce first played Festive Overture as a Year 11 student in 1976 for the Combined Schools Wind Band Tour to Vienna. A crowd favourite, Finlandia, was composed by Sibelius when Finland was part of the Russian Empire. Sibelius, an enthusiastic patriot, used his music to fight for Finnish independence. It begins with dark, menacing brass chords before the tempo accelerates to a more positive trumpet and horn fanfare and then transitioning to the famous hymn-like melody, creating calm before it ends with a rousing finish. Finlandia has a great history with Churchlands being first performed under the direction of Gillian Croston in the 1980s in school concerts and on international music tours. Sam Parry will be conducting Finlandia in what will be a full circle for him. As a student, Sam first performed Finlandia under the direction of Bruce Harriman, and tonight he follows Bruce's footsteps to the podium. Please welcome our first conductor, however, Ms. Miranda Sims.
Hi, my name's Wendy Clark and I'm from the 1976 music program class. So I guess you could call me a pioneer. Thanks to Churchlands High School, I have continued with my music career and I am now Associate Principal Flute with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, which has been a dream job for me. It's been wonderful. I've traveled the entire world from Russia, Japan, China, Europe, um, playing my flute. So thank you to Churchlands for giving me the inspiration and the chance to learn an instrument. It's been fabulous. So straight from finishing school at Churchlands, I went on to the University of Western Australia and studied there. And during that time, I actually taught flute at Churchlands for a little while, which was really fun to go back to my old school. And then after the study at the uni, I was lucky enough to get a job as the principal piccolo with the West Australian Symphony Orchestra and lecturer at WAPA. And then finally, it's brought me over here to Melbourne with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. So my time at Churchlands was a a real blast. I just loved playing the flute and I remember driving to lessons at 7.30 in the morning with my dad driving me from Wanneroo. I would sit in the back and practice my flute. Um, I was just always practicing my flute. I just loved it and I still do. So thank you to Churchlands. I hope you all have a great night tonight. I'm very excited that I can be here as well to celebrate the 50 years couldn't resist coming and seeing all my old colleagues. So enjoy tonight and thank you to Churchlands High and all the wonderful music teachers and the parents as well. Thanks. And I think after that we should have um, our flute player stand up. Wendy Clark. <laughs> okay, with astonishing efficiency, our choirs are in position. And I've got all of this stuff to read um, that was supposed to just sort of waffle while they moved into position. So I'll do it really quickly. Um, I'd like to acknowledge, to start with, Matt Stack and Tracy Ralton for the fabulous commemorative program that we all received tonight. The information in the program is the result of our best efforts and we would love to hear of additions or corrections to our record. So if there's something that you know that isn't quite right or something that we've missed, please let us know. We would love to, to add to that body of knowledge. Uh, the music teachers, especially Christelle, Morel, Miranda and Ursula, um, with their ne amazing networking and planning skills to pull all of this together. Um, and all the rest of the music staff who have assisted with logistics and all sorts of other um, preparatory things to make a concert like this possible. Uh, Claire Curtis from um, Church and Senior High School who um, made sure a lot of the stuff behind the scenes as far as tickets, allocations and things like that happened. Uh, Karen Walker who has been zipping about on stage um, sorting stuff all night. Um, our sound technician Joe Leach and Mike Nichols from RM Productions. Um, they, uh, Mike particularly is responsible for a lot of the fabulous videos you've seen tonight. And finally, oh, and the, um, our photographer, Art Lodowski, who is zipping about also with his, his camera, um, who will be providing a lot of fantastic um, photos we'll probably see in the music newsletter. And finally, the amazing concert hall staff who make this such an easy venue to work in. Nothing's too much trouble, and they are just the easiest people to, to, to manage things. Just everything gets sorted. So to all of those people, thank you. You've made this a really easy concert in a lot of ways. Um, big round of applause to all of those people. <laughs> the standout hit from The Lion King, Circle of Life, was written by Elton John with lyrics by Tim Rice. This orchestral arrangement was created specifically for tonight's concert by Perth composers Callum O'Reilly and Cleros Murphy. They are up there in the lower gallery somewhere. Thank you, gentlemen. This song encapsulates the main theme of tonight's concert, as former students perform alongside their children who are current music students, therefore completing the circle of life. This final item involves all music students and our wonderful music alumni. Please welcome their director, Christelle Hawksworth. Bye-bye. 
There is far too much to take in here To find that can ever be found But the sun climbing high Through the sapphire sky Keeps great and small Okay, I'd like to thank everyone who's had a hand in tonight's concert and played a part in making the Church and Special Music Program a truly special place to be for the last 50 years. Thank you, special guests, for sharing tonight with us. Thank you, Neil Hunt, for making tonight possible. And thank you, alumni. This is not only for you, it's because of you. So all that remains is for me to say, <laughs>